Hey guys, it's October 25th, and I'm going to talk about the movie House. House. And it's a Japanese movie, and it's a classic, and it is... My, I have the uh, Criterion Collection edition, and I'm very glad to own that. As you can see, I have the different colors going on in the background instead of just the red. Because this movie is very colorful. This movie reminded me a lot of Dario Argento's work, uh, like Suspiria, but other movies as well, like Deep Red, like I just read. Somewhat because of the visuals, but also because of just the music and different things about it. But it reminded me a lot of stuff. It reminded me of David Lynch's work. I don't know if, you know, David got inspiration from this or the other way around, or Dario did, or whatever. But... I knew that this movie was really surreal, and it was really artistic, and it was going to be like right up my alley because of all the reviews and stuff that I've read, and it's always suggested, it's always in all those, um, you know, lists that people make of must-see artistic movies and stuff. House is there. It is a horror movie. It's very experimental, though, and if you're really not into artsy, surreal-type movies, it might really try your patience. This movie isn't going to be for everybody because... You know, as somebody said, it's almost like in every scene of this movie, there's some kind of a surreal imagery. Like, it's unlike anything I've seen before, experienced. It's a movie that has to be experienced. And for me to really lay down the plot or, you know, go into detail, try to explain this movie, you know, it's kind of like a psychedelic trip. Like, I mean, you know, I haven't really taken acid or anything, but like what you would imagine, like it would be like mind-blowing, like things transforming into different things and different colors and it's just a continual well let me just kind of talk about the plot a little bit basically so basically there's like a group of girls high school girls or whatever or college um and it's like the end of the school year and they're excited because it's summer and they're, they're gonna usually they'll go on vacation or something i think there's like seven girls each one of these girls are kind of named for their different traits, like there's Melody, she like plays piano, or she's good with music, or whatever, there's Kung Fu, she's good at fighting, there's uh, Fantasy, she's always fantasizing about things, there's Gorgeous, who is like the main female in this movie, and so there's other girls, there's Mac, she always thinks about eating, there is... Precious and sweet, I think. And I don't know what else, but... Gorgeous is the main one. And, um... I think that... It might be her father that owns some land or something, and they plan to go to, to his land or something, uh, if I remember correctly. But we see a scene with her and her father, and uh, he's like, we're not going to go alone this time, like, we're going to take a guest or something, and, like, another woman comes out, and he's like, I want you to meet, like, your new mom, basically. There's this older woman, and she gets upset, the girl, gorgeous, gets upset and leaves. She's pissed off because her mother's dead, for whatever reason, and she doesn't want her mother to be replaced by another woman. And she's looking at photos of her mother, saying how she loves her mom, and She's in her bedroom, you know, angry, and she's basically saying that she hates her father, and she wants to erase her father, and, you know, she's, like, marking out his pictures, and she hates this new woman. Well, um, so, we also have the group of girls. One of the girls has a crush on, like, one of the male teachers or something, and he has, like, some kind of training that they do during the summer, but I think that he says, like, that's canceled or something, if I remember correctly. Anyways, Gorgeous gets this idea that she wants to visit her aunt at her aunt's house to, to go visit the town that her mom used to live in, to, like, reminisce in the times with her mom or whatever. And so she, like, sends a letter to her aunt, and her aunt um, responds, you know, that she would love to have her and her friends. And so they're all, all her and her friends are going to go visit her aunt at her aunt's house in her mom's town. And when she sends the letter, like, this cat shows up, this white cat. That's what's on the cover of that, is a cat. Believe it or not, that's a cat. Um, and that's the kind of artistic craziness that you'll get in that movie. If you look at that house, so that art cover, or the, the house cover, the art on it, you see that that's a cat. And 
there are so many different just effects in this movie. But basically, they go, and I'm going to give spoilers and stuff, they go to the aunt's house, and it's basically like a haunted house. Um, strange things happen, and it just gets really out of control, and basically, the girls kind of start getting killed one by one, I guess, and we find out in the end basically that the ant has been dead and like the, who they who they have seen as the ant is like the ghost of her or whatever somehow the cat is like her cat so somehow the cat's like tied into that you see there's a lot of cartoony effects like even in the trailer um so it has lots of flashes of color it changes from cartoon to real it has the effects where it'll show things happening like in the center of the film while things are happening like in the background like you'll see like their faces when it introduces each of the girls even in the trailer you can see that effect in use there's just so many effects and it's just like non-stop like everything is just like constantly changing and even like the character's perspective changes because like let's say they go on a bus or a train or a train and a bus to visit the, to the aunt's house and during this travel, like, maybe you'll see, like, outside the windows, you'll see, like, a cartoon sunset, like, so, like, they're in, like, a real train or whatever, but, like, the background, like, the sky is, like, cartoon. But then, like, we'll get, like, an outside view of the train, and, like, the whole train is, like, cartoon. Or all of a sudden, like, the girls are sitting there talking to one another in the train, and, like, the train's, like, gone, and it's just, like, the cartoon background of, like, the the scenery and they're kind of just like floating like in the scenery <laughs> and it's just like over and over and over again these effects everything's like changing and i mentioned how like the character's perspective changed because like on the train ride or whatever the gorgeous girl's telling them the story about her aunt how her aunt had a husband and it was like her mom and her aunt and, and her aunt's husband but there was like a war and her aunt's husband, her uncle or whatever had to go off to war. Or maybe they weren't married yet. They were going to be married. Okay, I guess they were engaged. So they were, they were to be married. But instead he had to like go off to war and he ended up dying. Like it shows, it shows this while she's describing it like in a flashback scene. Okay. And she's like describing this story to the other girls. But as we're watching the flashback, all of a sudden it's like the girl's perspective is like they're watching the flashback. And like, so we see scenes of him like going off to war, like marching or something. And she'll be like, you know, yeah, he had to go off to war. And then the girls would be like, oh, like he looks so handsome. Like he looks, you know, so manly. Like they're watching like what we're watching. And it's just like messes with your head. Like, whoa, like, and there's so much, like, these girls are constantly, like, giggling and laughing and talking over each other. And there's just so much dialogue and so much with the scenes going on, so much with the dialogue going on and things changing and things changing and things changing. And that's, like, kept up throughout the entire movie. And, like, the beginning of the movie is really beautiful, like, hippie kind of vibe, like, with the cartoon stuff. I think maybe it was, like, made in the 70s, and I don't know some of the soundtrack that's used in this, but... You get kind of the vibe of, like, the Beatles, like, Yellow Submarine, like, Schoolhouse Rock, like, Three is the Magic Number by Blind Melon and stuff like that. And it's all, like, hippy-dippy, you know, happy world. And, um, you know, they're, like, giggling and prancing and things are happening. But there's weird kind of creepy stuff all throughout. It really gets more creepy and, like, horror towards the end, the second half or so of the film. But... Even there's a scene, like, when she's describing about how her uncle or, you know, her would-be, her aunt's, you know, fiancé, whatever, how, like, he died, and, like, when she found out, like, her aunt was, like, holding a rose, and we see that, and you see, like, red, it looks, you know, it's, like, red, like, cartoon blood, like, going down her fingers, like, holding, like, a real rose or something, it's, like, a real woman holding a real rose with, like, cartoon blood coming down, and, like, the rose, like, wilts or something. And and it makes the sound of, like, a baby crying. It's like... Wah, wah. So there's all these weird sound effects that are always thrown in, too. There's sound effects with the cats and lots of different things. You know, babies crying or whatever. And that's kind of startling to me. Like, when, when it did that, I was like, well, that's kind of 
kind of weird, like, seeing that, like, and just hearing that, like, seeing it and hearing it and not hearing what you would think you would hear after what you'd see. Like, you wouldn't think that a, a flower wilting would make, like, a baby crying sound. It kind of, like, messes with your head, like, you get into this mode, but it's always, like, keeping you off edge. And... You know, I'll just kind of spoil and jump into some of the horror scenes. I'll kind of describe some of that stuff. You know, there's a floating head at the beginning. But there's, like, even before stuff starts going really crazy, like, they're already kind of creeped out when they go into the house, and there's, like, a area with, like, a little skeleton, like a, like a fake skeleton, like a little statue kind of thing that's, like, hanging or something, and, and it moves and it makes, like, bone sounds, like... I don't know, you know, like her bones rattling, and they're like, ooh, like a skeleton, it's scary, and and uh, that thing appears many times. You know, let's just say there's a scene, let's just, I'll just talk about, I'll jump ahead to some of the bigger scenes where there's the girl, Melody, that ends up playing the piano, and uh, she plays the piano maybe a couple of times in the movie or whatever. For one, like, there is some really beautiful, like, really beautiful Blew Me Away piano music in this. And, like, the main theme or whatever that they repeat. But, like, the sweeps and the piano song and stuff, like... They said there's, like, hippie music stuff, but there's also, like, really great piano music. It's, like, really beautiful, but it's really chaotic, and it's really startling, and it's, like, everything <laughs> at once, but... But the Melody Girl's playing the piano. Let's just get to the scene where, like, she gets killed or whatever, basically. Like, she's playing the piano, and there's different things, like, some of the different keys light up different colors. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, all the keys are lighting up different colors. And, you know, there's a part where, like, she's playing the piano, and then she lifts up her fingers, and, like, her fingers are, like, gone. <laughs> she's like, oh, my fingers are gone. Like, and the piano, like, eats her. She gets, like, pulled into the piano, and it's, like, opening and closing, like, the mangler or whatever, and, like, she's getting sucked in more and more, and she's struggling, but yet, yeah, like, her body is, like, twisting and stuff, like, as she's going in there, and it's going into, like, cartoony kind of scenes as it's happening, and it's just, like, psychedelic, like, craziness, like, body parts and, like, blood, but, like, color and, <laughs> you know... <laughs> It's just like an overload of your mind. Like, I can't even describe it. Like, but I'm ready to watch it again. I mean, it, it was really good. Oh, I don't know, man. I just, I don't feel like I should go over every single scene or every detail. It's really something you got to experience for yourself. You know, be warned that it's not for everybody. But if you want something totally different, um, it blew me away. I, I mean, I kind of knew what was going into with this, and like that scene right there that I just... And then there's, the, there's like, the, the fingers by themselves from her hands are, like, playing the piano. Like, just floating fingers are just, like, touching the piano. And... Long story comes to short, I guess, if I'm going to give spoilers, like, of the ending, the the ghost of the mother or whatever, or the ghost of the aunt or whatever, I think from my understanding like she possesses gorgeous somehow she takes over gorgeous so she's like in her or whatever basically all the girls end up dying um and gorgeous says something like you know my aunt's been dead and she never got to marry her husband and you know her fiance and so like every year whatever she has like girls who haven't yet to be wed like come to her house and she eats them something like that it's like the house eats them <laughs> and the scene where like she possesses gorgeous or whatever you know like gorgeous is in front of these mirrors and she's putting on makeup and then like pieces of her like the mirror cracks and like pieces of her face like start coming off and there's like fire behind the pieces and that stuff reminds me of like david lynch but, uh, really cool, really cool, crazy effects. So, yeah, and then, you know, to spoil the very end, the very end we see, like, the house kind of everything back to normal, and Gorgeous is there, and all the other girls are gone, and she invites, like, her stepmom, like, the new supposed mom or whatever, to the house. 
And basically that's kind of how it ends. Like she's going to kill. Or if she does, I don't remember. Or she gets revenge and she gets rid of that that new mom. And that's about it. <clears throat> but, I mean, there's so much more going in there. But trying to take in all the action and everything is like, it's a lot to absorb. Because there's so much being thrown at you. And there's kind of another side thing where I, I talked about that male teacher that the girl really likes. Like he said he would come rescue her. And there's like, so there's like scenes where he's kind of like on his way to, to help them. Mm. Okay, let's do the old part where I just take the case and we look at it. There's that. You see how kind of crazy it is on the back. Get kind of the vibe, the hippie, weird vibe of it. How to describe Nobuhuko Abayashi's indescribable 1977 movie house? Question mark. As a psychedelic ghost tale? A stream of consciousness bedtime story? An episode of Scooby Doo as directed by Mario Bava? Any of the above will do for this hallucinatory head trip about a schoolgirl who travels with six classmates to her ailing aunt's creaky country home and comes face to face with evil spirits, a demonic house cat, a bloodthirsty piano, and other ghoulish visions all realized by Obayashi via Mates, whatever, animation, Mat Mates, okay, via Mates, animation, and collage effects. Equally absurd and nightmarish, House may have been beamed to Earth from some other planet, never before available on home video in the United States. It's one of the most exciting cult discoveries in years. And yeah, so there's there's a lot of things where things are like superimposed, like videos are t superimposed on top of the other video, and you see like multiple things happening. You see how the guy like turns into the cartoon skeleton and crumbles. Just in the trailer, you see a lot of these crazy effects, but it's like non-stop. It's like assaulting you with ideas throughout the movie. That is her mother. That's Gorgeous's mother. That is the scene with the rose wilting I told you about. That scene kind of startled me. That's one of the memorable startling scenes for me and that's before things get really crazy too so it's cool that that's on there but yeah it is unsettling and so there's no really good pictures here i mean a little bit but it's mostly like a dialogue they're outside of the train station before they travel see some of the beautiful hippie kind of stuff before it turns into the nightmarish world it doesn't really have any of the nightmarish stuff on here I mean, besides like the cat I guess and the that and then there's this on the inside kind of pictures of different actors actresses so it's been a long time coming but you know what i really did enjoy this movie and i mean it's got to be one of my new favorites of all time not just favorite horror movie but just favorite movie and i don't know how i would fit it in there with all those but it's a spectacle it really is how so and so, yeah, there's the American house, and it's completely different, not to be confused with this one, which I think it's good, too. It's a, an old, corny horror movie, but these are completely different. So, that's going to be it. I'm sure I'll talk about this movie a lot more in the future, but this is my first time cracking into it. So, check it out. Number 25, House. All right, sayonara.